Hey guys, Mish here, and things have been a little bit crazy in the world of grad school lately, so I've been doing more monthly videos instead of weekly videos, but I'm planning to get back into weekly ones this spring slash summer, so stay tuned for that. Today's video is on a fun little food called resistant starch, which you may have heard about if you've seen the buzz surrounding it lately, because more and more fitness slash nutrition type BuzzFeed-like articles are coming out about how resistant starch is great for you and how it helps you lose weight and this and that, but there haven't been many citations to actual studies in these sorts of articles. So I'm here to share a study with you as usual, and this study looks at the effects of resistant starch on appetite and how much you eat after eating resistant starch, and to see if it makes you feel fuller and eat less. And first, some of you may be wondering, what the heck is resistant starch? This is sort of like a type of fiber in a way, and it passes through your intestines largely undigested, but seems to do a lot of good stuff for you while it's in there. And you can find resistant starch in a lot of your favorite starchy foods, especially those that are uncooked, like underripe bananas or slightly less ripe bananas have a lot of good resistant starch, and raw oats and raw potatoes. I don't really eat raw potatoes, but raw oats are fantastic, <laughs> just saying. And also cooked and cooled starches. So for example, if you make a bunch of rice or make a bunch of potatoes, or like cook them and then put them in the fridge overnight, the next day they will be full of type three retrograde resistant starch. And there are four types of resistant starch, but I'll be going over all about resistant starch in a different video. But this study focuses on type two, just for those of you who are wondering. So what these researchers did is they gave participants 24 grams of resistant starch at breakfast and lunch and looked to see how this changed how much they ate for dinner and over the next 24 hours. And today's study is one of the first that looks at resistant starch in the context of an actual meal with mixed macronutrients because past studies studied it largely in isolation, which isn't really super relevant for you and I who would be eating it in a meal form rather than just on its own. All the subjects tried both treatments, where on one day some of them got a placebo supplement and some of them got the resistant starch. They had all participants eat the same evening meal the day before they came in for study days, and then they gave them a breakfast of Rice Krispies and milk, along with either 24 grams of resistant starch in a mousse or placebo starch that wasn't resistant starch in a mousse. And they tasted exactly the same, they looked exactly the same, the amount of available carbohydrates were exactly the same. And they did the same thing at lunch. And then they looked to see how the participants felt in terms of hunger and fullness and how much the participants ate at an enormous 2300 calorie dinner where they could eat as much as they wanted. In terms of subjective ratings of appetite and hunger and satiety and that kind of thing, there was no significant difference between the people who got the resistant starch and the people who didn't. However, at that gigantic 2300 calorie dinner, the participants who got the resistant starch ate 100 calories less than the group who did not get the starch, or resistant starch. And this doesn't sound like a huge difference, but over the course of 24 hours, the participants who got the resistant starch actually ate 400 calories less. So just to put that into perspective, if you ate 400 calories less every day of the week, you would lose almost a pound a week. So. It looks like resistant starch, in this case, could actually lead these participants to lose a pound a week, approximately, if this effect continued on day after day, which all science suggests it would. And interestingly, the main thing that seems to account for this difference in calories is that the group who got the resistant starch ate less fat than the group who did not get it. So it looked like this resistant starch didn't make you feel like you were going to eat less, but you actually ended up eating less fat without meaning to. So it looks like it affects your appetite in a way that you're not necessarily aware of, but it actually makes you eat less. And another interesting result is that the group that got the resistant starch had lower postprandial insulin, so they had less of an insulin spike after eating. So for those of you who are trying to watch your blood sugar, watch your insulin, resistant starch might be a really easy, convenient way to improve your insulin response. And in case any of you are looking to replicate this study on yourself, the type of starch they used was corn starch that was like processed into a special resistant starch type formula, which I think you can buy on your own too if you want. Personally, I like to get my resistant starch from cooked and cooled potatoes as well as raw oats. So moral of the story is adding some resistant starch to your diet might be a great way to 
eat less without trying and therefore lose weight without trying. There's a couple different ways to get it. You can get it in sort of a supplement form where it's all distilled into just resistant starch so you can take it in like tablespoon form or you can get it from various types of starches which I will make a detailed video on in the future. And yeah, worth a try. It's good for your digestion and all that. In fact, resistant starches are so cool I might do a whole video series on them because, for example, they might play a huge role in preventing colorectal cancer and other types of gastrointestinal problems. So more on that later. Thanks so much for watching and please share and subscribe to see more videos.